welcome to Friends on Friday. Today I've been thinking about how much I like using emojis when I send people messages. I love them to be able to see how I feel really uh, easily. So if I'm excited, I send an excited emoji. If I'm sad, I might send an emoji with a tear running down its face. I've made some emoji dishes. This is my happy emoji. This is my sad emoji. When I look at people's faces, they can be a bit like an emoji. I can often tell how they're feeling by their face or by what they're saying. And recently I've heard loads of people complaining about the lockdown, how long it's been going on and um, how they don't like it very much at all. So I thought we'd do a little test. If we look at this piece of paper really carefully, I want you to look at it really carefully. And I want you to be thinking about what you would tell me, oops, let me hold it up, what you could you would tell me you can see. Hey, I bet loads of you were saying, I can see a little black dot. And that's really funny, because the black dot is really tiny, and the white paper around it that you could draw on is really big. But we can be like that sometimes. We can concentrate on the small little things that are really bad in our lives, rather than being thankful for all the good things. Like, we can't maybe go um, to school or to our grandparents' house, but we can go outside in the garden and play, or go out for walks and spend time with our family. So let's try and focus on the good things, the things we can do. I was also thinking that words can change with how you're feeling. Which words would you rather hear? Would you rather hear thankfulness or would you rather hear complaining? I've heard so much complaining. And words can make it be like a taste in our mouths. So sweet or sour. I'm going to get some friends to come in and we're going to do a little bit of tasting and see what they think. Ivy, Faith, they're just coming. Yeah. Could you just stand up here? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I wondered if you girls would help me with a taste test, please. Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you each a spoon. Okay. And first of all, I want you to taste from this pot. So just scoop a little bit out and taste it. And then I want you to tell me what, what you think of the taste. What does it taste like? Okay, you ready to taste? Oh, that's a funny face you're pulling. Sour. Really sour. Really sour. Okay, let's try the other one. What's that like, Faith? How would you describe that taste? Really sweet. 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 Okay. So now what I want you to do, oh, I'm just going to show you what it is. This one was lemon juice. Lemon juice. Mm. You said that was very sour, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Really and this one was it. honey. I knew it. Really sweet. I knew it. Okay. I have two more labels to put on these pots. This label says thankful and this one says grumbling. I want you to stick the label on the one that makes you feel most thankful. Which one tastes like thankful, do you think? You do the first one, Faith. Uh, which one have you chosen to stick it on? This one. Thankful. What's in that one? Honey. Yes, yeah, thankful. Because it's sweet. And thankfulness makes us feel sweet. It gives us a sweet taste in our mouth. Okay. And it makes you Where's feel grumbling very going, good. Ivy? Because you make you very good. On the lemon. Grumbling on the lemon juice because it's sour. Makes me think, girls, you know when we're saying things, do our words make people have a sweet taste in their mouth or a sour taste? Should we be thankful or should we be grumbling? What do you think? I think that we should be in the season thankful. Brilliant. Thanks so much for helping, girls. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Do you want to say goodbye to the kids? Bye. Oh yeah, good time. They're exactly right, aren't they, Faith and Ivy? We should be being thankful, even in this season. So, let's not concentrate on things that are wrong in our lives, because we can discourage others and we can discourage ourselves. Let's read a couple of verses from the Bible that help us to understand what God thinks about this. Here's the first one. Philippians 2, 14 to 16. It says... Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you will be blameless and pure, 
children of God without any fault. But you are living with people all around you who have lost their sense of what is right. Among those people you shine like lights in a dark world and you offer them the teaching that gives life. So what does Paul say about avoiding grumbling? He says it makes us stand out. It makes us shine like stars because people notice something different. And that's true. If everyone around you is whining and you show a better spirit, a better attitude, people will notice and would genuinely appreciate it. So what does Paul suggest we do instead? He tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. So rather than grumbling, we are to rejoice in every situation, even the lockdown. We can pray and ask God's guidance. Here we can say, see the best way to stop complaining by thank, being thankful and give, giving thanks. It's hard to whine when you're thinking about how grateful you are. And instead of negative words, you can then speak thankful words. I know a family that found a way of being joyful even in the lockdown. So I'm just going to show you a video of that right now. Yo, yo, yo! Stay at home, it's the safest place. Hand wash often, don't leave a trace. Avoid your mouth, don't touch your face. Keep your distance, six feet space. An elbow cough, save the human race when you do the quarantine check. Save the human race when you do the quarantine check. Save the human race when you do the quarantine check. Save the human race when you do the quarantine check. Carey family, we really enjoyed watching your dance. So remember kids, be thankful, speak positively and find joy in every circumstance. Bye, see you next time.